What is up everyone, Knix is here, welcome back to Shredding Song, starting over. And as you remember, last time we finished Julie's route, and now, as the Wheel of Fate decided since Aki called it herself, we <laughs> will be doing Aki's route now, the shit lonely herself. So let's see how hectic this turns out. Oh boy. I walked along the beach and able to sleep, so this is the same stuff. Tomorrow, I would have to announce my decision to the girls. I wonder how they will react. While rivalries between members of an idol group were common, I felt like the girls of Star Nova had matured enough to accept whatever happened. Regardless of who was the center, I wanted each of the girls to shine in their own way. I wonder if I had become naive. My job as producer is not easy necessarily to make any performers happy but to bring in revenue for the company. Sorry about that, already the beginning and we got interruptions. Anyways, the and the nature of the piece was that the one frequently could not be accomplished at the expense of others. I was ignoring the fact that as we grew bigger, the nature of our jobs was going to have to change. One day I would be, I would have to choose between the happiness of the girls or the success of the Star Nova. And when that day came, by coincidence, I met Aki on the beach. Eh? Producer-san? What are you doing out here? Isn't it past your bedtime? <laughs> past your bedtime? Oh, I, eh. Nothing much. Just had a little trouble sleeping, that's all. That sounds unlike you. Is something bothering you? <laughs> I was just thinking of my new brilliant plan to defeat Quasar and become number one. That's all. Anyways, nothing really wrong, so don't worry about me. You know, when a woman says nothing's wrong, that usually means something's the matter. Boy, you're a persistent one, aren't you? Besides, I'm not, uh, one to keep my problems pent up. If something's bothering me, you would have already heard about it. Hey, producer son. The idea, uh, the deal that's going down with Soma, you think it'll work out? It's hard to tell, honestly. A lot of commercial success is mostly luck. At this stage, there's so many idol groups all trying to achieve notoriety that... When the one idol group does somehow score a breakaway hit, it's hard to determine what exactly differentiates them from any other group. Still, when you're starting small like us, getting signed on by a record label is a positive step. Eh, I guess when you're at the bottom, the only place to go is up. <laughs> it's about time you finally put me in charge of this gig. Don't worry, I'll lead everyone to the top no matter the cost. <laughs> How did you know I picked you as the center? Isn't it obvious? I knew from the day one that I was going to be the center. That's what I've been saying all this time, isn't it? So you assume based on your own self-confidence? Basically. They say in sports, if you can envision yourself victorious, then you're already halfway there. Well, maybe the idol industry isn't that much different. Because if I don't believe I can win, why would anyone else? Look here. You're not going to accomplish squat unless you believe from the bottom of your heart that you can do it. Call it pointless arrogance if you want, but if uh, I've always believed I'm going to be the greatest idol of all time. It's not pointless arrogance. You push yourself a lot harder than any of the other girls to the point where you're even willing to harm yourself. Nobody's going to reach the heights that you seek without pushing beyond their limits to the point where everything breaks. Maybe you're the only one here willing to do that. That's why you're the center. Probably. Anyways, I'm not scared, alright? I'd rather go out early in the great big blaze and die slowly as a nobody. This is my decision, and as my producer, you better respect it and make me into a legend. Perhaps a normal person might be disturbed by Aki's willingness to destroy herself in order to achieve her dreams. However, I shared some kind of understanding with Aki's devotion to idols. Indeed, town alone wasn't enough to vault a performance to the top of the charts. It took thousands of hours of practice, tears, blood, sacrifice. Countless idols left this industry yearly, uh, their bodies and minds shattered before they could reach any sort of fame. And yet, the allure of victory was so great, the romance of becoming immortalized as a pop icon is so beautiful, and the potential riches so vast that for every broken girl carried out in a stretcher, three more eagerly came in to replace her. Even I shared that dream of creating an idol for the ages, and I was willing to do anything to accomplish it. Alright, I'll stand by you from 
um, come fire or high water. You better. I won't forgive you if you mess this up. <laughs> I got it. Anyways, thanks to everyone's hard work, we made it this far. Now go on and lead the team the rest of the way. The center of Star Nova. Kashiwagiaki. Yeah. <laughs> of course we'll win. I'm the center after all. Aki laughed out into the vast ocean. <laughs> I'm gonna be number one. I stood by the diminutive girl as she swore her vows to the ocean. As a producer, I felt proud of her determination. However, in a distant corner of my heart, apprehension brewed. Despite how she acted, it was obvious she was still just a kid. Just what kind of childhood did Aki have for her to give up her entire girlhood for a long-shot dream of becoming a pop sensation? In the part of my consciousness which I had long tucked away, I wondered if I was doing the right thing. Was it truly right to take this girl down this path? A path of commercial exploitation, dashed hopes, and almost certain disappointment? But I could not think of those thoughts, for I too had my goals. If our goals were the same, there was no d uh, need to doubt myself. Some people wanted to live long and peaceful lives, while others wanted short, filled with fame and fortune. It wasn't my plan to decide what was best for others. My concerns rationalized away, I returned to the reality and convinced myself that a I had to make Aki into an entertainment superstar. Well, this has got to be f interesting. <laughs> Because Julie started off with her trying to confess to him, and a Aki's just a hype little shit. Uh, anyways, the next morning we gathered under the staff tent at the beach. Good morning, everyone. Time to shoot for our PV's final. Uh, time to shoot for our PV's finally come. This will be the first PV debut, the new Centro Star Nova. But before I announce the decision, I want to make some short remarks. First, Maria, you've served well as the team's general manager so far. No matter what happens, you'll always be the captain of Star Nova. Please continue to look after your Kohai. Alright, leave it to me. Regardless of who is the center, a small unit like Star Nova still counts on each and every one of you. Remember, the center is not the only girl in the unit who must shine. Each of you are blossoming new stars. Please work together as one to bring Star Nova to our bright destiny uh, stage. Understood. <clears throat> Without further ado, the center of Star Nova will- Well, they didn't change- This is new, but it still has scene text. <laughs> Without further ado, the center of Star Nova will henceforth be Aki. Of course Aki-chan's the center, ha! Ah, congratulations! <laughs> Ma, I thought it would be something like that. Hits only expected, huh? Well, their, their responses are the same. Figures as much as, it, uh, as expected, it's gotta be Aki. Um, congratulations. I shall work hard to be a contender for next time. Ah, uh, Mika, uh, we have to get the wheel again. But no, I'm saving you for last because the best is always for last. So, no, you're not next time. Next time it'll be... Uh, fuck, it, it, it'll be... Uh, Maton, sure. Uh, I I looked away and looked at the screen, and my eyes landed on her. So Maton will be next. God damn it! Uh, congratulations. Uh, yeah, next time. Um, so you're the center. It's not like I even wanted to be the center or anything. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> and now let's all work hard to make this PV a huge success. Understood. Oh boy. How much is this gonna be? Like, cause this is scene. No. <laughs> uh, we'll see how much is gonna be like repeated text, and then we'll, you know. Uh, I think for this one only, we'll read it all again, no matter if it's seen or not. But if this is how it's gonna be for everyone, then you know we're gonna have to do some skipping, unfortunately. Uh, the girls spoke amongst themselves as the staff finished setting up the fin filming equipment. Phew, I'm glad the center section's behind us now. And I mean, I guess reading all of it would be fine for every route, because say if you only wanted a certain girl's route, like, if, if you don't like fucking Aki and you wanted to skip her route, like, then you could just, like, go to, like, say, fucking Natsuki's next. You can go and I read all hers, and then you'll get the full experience instead of be skipping everywhere. So I guess it'll be fine to read for this. Um, 
Yeah, I'm glad the center section's behind us now. But it, it's, it, I hope it's not like Sunrise, where like globs and globs of text are rewritten. Uh, the anxiety of not knowing who was going to be pig really got to my nerves. I guess so. <laughs> and to think we once fought over who was going to be the center. No matter what happens from now, let's all think of each other as teammates rather than rivals. Sultra John's got the idea. Even though the center battle's over, we still got a long road ahead of us. We need to all work together as a team rather than tear each other down if we're really going to become top idols. <laughs> what a change to think this woman was nothing more than a jaded alcoholic just a few months back. Boy, I heard that shit, Loli. Um... We've all worked so hard to overcome our problems the past few months. Isn't it great that Maria's now a responsible team captain? She certainly has changed a lot. I remember the days when she would always report to work hungover like yesterday. <laughs> She'd claim, uh, chain smoke between practice sessions and then start huffing and puffing as soon as we started dancing. Hey, shut up, you brat. Seriously, it's... Is that any way to treat your captain? All right, all right, Onesan. Uh, Osana, Osama, ha! Ah. Anyways, Onesama certainly has turned over a new leaf. Eh? I feel like I can really rely on Onesama from now. Onesama, take care. Uh, care not on too. Um, oh, you guys suck. Never mind. I was a moron to think I could. Uh, we could be anything but rivals. The girls laughed amongst themselves as Maria messed up her hair in frustration. Well, this is just the way Star Nova is. <laughs> if we're not strong enough to be able to voice our opinion, uh, honest opinions, we would never become the greatest idol group. Seriously, I can't believe I'm going to be stuck being your captain. This is the worst. I return to the girls after speaking to the staff. Alright, we're ready to shoot now. Uh, so, for the first scene, you girls will be in the water playing with a beach ball. The camera will come in the close, uh, to catch both. Yeah, catch both underwater and regular shots. But, just act like you're having a fun day at the beach, alright? Understood. Sorry about that, guys. Anyways, the girls ran into the waters and laughed amongst themselves as they started to pass the beach ball around. If it weren't for the crew buzzing around them, they would have looked like a dem- uh, looked identical to a group of friends out for a fun day at the beach. These were the Star Nova girls of today. Once upon a time, they were seven broken, flawed stars at No Name Talent Agency. They had no skills, no hope, and no vote of Asian. However, they still decided to band together for one final shot at Stardom. Despite their problems, they slowly formed a bonds of friendship with their fellow unit members. Despite their previous failures, they practiced hard every day to rise to the shining stage of their dreams. Thanks to their hard work, their disappointing, gray, dull uh, days gradually began to fade away. They somehow scraped together their first live. From there, they slowly built up their popularity. And before they knew it, they were suddenly popular enough to have diehard fans show up to at every event of theirs. They participated in Idol Grand Prix and got lucky enough to even share the stage with the greatest idol group in the country. Now they were, and uh, now here they were, about to debut under a major record label with their first high-budget PV. Though their, through their combined determination, these dying stars reignited their careers in a brilliant flash of light. And yet, our story was far from over. Back then, we had no idea of the perils we would face as idols. We were but small timers who eagerly sought to become the next big thing, blissfully oblivious as to the sorrows which fame would bring us. One day, we would reach that signing stage we had all dreamed upon standing. However, what we would find there was not happiness, but unfathomable darkness. This is the story of the shining songs of Star Nova. The story of our time as the top idols of the entertainment industry. Oh boy. It begins! Shit, Lily route! <laughs> God damn it. <sighs> Let's see how this goes. The day of the release of our CD. The girls exploded into the office the first thing in the morning and marched toward me with insanity in their eyes. 
<laughs> Producer! What is the meaning of this? You? What have you done? <laughs> oh. Ah! oh, Dark One, why is thou test this one so? <laughs> God damn it. You better take responsibility for this. I turned around on my office chair to face them, my hands folded together under my chin. Everyone, we did it. I rose from my seat and hailed to the heavens, my arms outstretched on high. Yeah! <sighs> Star Nova's first single, CD, under summer music, debuts at the top of the coral corn tarts. PV gains over 1 million views within a week. All DVDs sold out in three days. Net sales, 80 million yen and rising. Yahoo! Oh boy. Aki chapter, mother. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I don't like this. I, I'm gonna be right back. I, I gotta get myself a drink for this one. Let me, let me get a drink. I'll be right back. Oh boy. Oh boy, mother. Oh boy. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Got myself a drink. <sighs> Let's get to it. Let's see what the fuck this is gonna be. Let me get a sip. <sighs> oh boy. Let's see how this is gonna go. That was the story how Star Nova struck its first major commercial home run. Looking back, 2017 was a great year. A bunch of down-on-their-luck girls came together, gradually became an idol unit, debuted and became big names in the business. And now 218 had come. Indeed, we had just held our first year anniversary live at Yogi Park. The larger venue only served to illustrate how much Star Nova had changed since its inception. Today, the girls could be called pro-idols in every sense of the term. However, that did not mean it was clear sailing from here. Rather, this was where the troubles could begin. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's, 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 let's throw it at me, game. What, 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 what horrors await me for the shit lowly? One look at Star Nova made it clear that the stakes had gone way up. In most of uh, the idol stories you see on television, it was always a bunch of kids who decided to become idols. They begin really weak and full of doubts, but their perseverance, they gradually put on more lives, filled with elaborate dance sequences and energetic songs. So my guess is like the first part will be the same, but then throughout the rest it'll be different because like the way that turned out was because of Julie's scandals and whatnot, but now this is Aki, so who... Oh boy, mother, huh? Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Let's see. Ah. Build. Um, they begin really weak, full of doubts, but through their perseverance, they gradually put on more lives, filled with elaborate dances, sequences, and energetic songs. And then, in the story climax, they put on a big live where the girls finally debut as big name idols. They win, and presumably the girls go on to live happily ever after. Well, as a producer in this business, I can wholeheartedly say that's totally unbelievable rubbish. First of all, just because you had scored one big victory didn't mean anything. Winning the first victory only gave you a shot at playing the grand game. In fact, it was only after the first big victory that your idol story began at all. And who knew how things would unfold after that? Maybe you'll get into a huge scandal and be torn apart by the media fans. Ooh. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> and leave the business as an empty husk of your former self. That technically did happen for a second, and then we came back, but, ooh, Julie. <laughs> or maybe you'll be betrayed by your sponsors and end up being cheated out of all your royalties and end up unemployed with no marketable skills aside from just looking cute, which you'll most likely lose in two more years of time. Damn! Uh, worse, some idols even get tricked by their own producers. They end up led by a bunch of big promises, only to find themselves replaced by another fresh young face as soon as they outgrew their youth. I wasn't saying that I was necessarily planning to do such a thing. 
<laughs> I'm just saying that there was a whole lot more that could happen to an idol after what looked like the television happy end. Life doesn't have anything of the sort. It merely has an end. When you grow old and finally pass away, until that point, any inconceivable good or bad things could happen to you. <clears throat> so, where am I going with this long d d tribe, you wonder? Well, I'm just saying, just because things have been going well so far didn't mean our good luck was going to continue. As the producer of Star Nova, I had to be ever uh, vigilant. Just one tiny mistake could mean the ruination of everything we've worked so hard to create. Ah, but first things first. You probably are wondering where I was. Behold my- Oh! I got a, I got a new apartment this time! Look at that boy living large! I got a drink to that! <laughs> oh, hell yeah, my boy! You got a new apartment and everything! Hell yeah! Thanks to the enormous amount of money that Star Nova was now moving for shining productions and some music, my pay had gone up considerably since it started last year. <clears throat> oh, I guess- Yeah, it's 218, isn't it? So that means we skipped 217, because- in Julie's story, we ended in 218, but hell, hey, we doing good. Now you can say that I was a hotshot idol producer, managing seven of the industry's very best idols, at least in my subjective opinion. And sitting next to me was the crown jewel of Star Nova, our hardworking but still kind of shit lowly center. <laughs> Why is Aki here? <laughs> I, I question this. Why are you here? <laughs> You seem pretty deep in your illusions of grandeur, Oni-chan. <clears throat> You're still coming here every night? Well, like you can talk considering that you drive me here from the office every night. Aki reverted back to her stupid kid persona. Oni-chan just can't sleep without having his Aki-chan near, can he? Kia, doing all sorts of unmanageable things in this frail tiny body. Aki-chan, Aki-chan can't get married anymore! Oni-chan will take good care of Aki-chan, won't he? He'll make Aki-chan into his lovely housewife, won't he? Stop, you're seriously creeping me out! Yeah! I feel bad, cause like, after I saw how small she is, that's really creepy! Oh no! I didn't think she was that small, but oh Jesus! Her sprite doesn't make her look that small, but when she was sitting on his lap, it's like, damn, she's small! Oh God! Ooh, this is this is. Look, this wasn't what it looked like. <laughs> While to most observers it may look like a rising producer like myself had used his newfound power and wealth to take advantage of his teenage idol, I had absolutely no interest in twisting Aki into my personal plaything. Uh, unreliable producers who place their own sexual gratification upon the uh, interest of their unit were truly the scum of the earth. And moreover, I knew that Aki was far from the naive, starry-eyed idol that would be taken advantage of like that. Most likely, it would be myself who would be in danger of such a black relationship. <laughs> regardless, seeing how Aki was adamant about spending every evening in my apartment, regardless of whether I invited her or not, I had no choice but to smuggle her in and out of my private car to avoid detection. If the paparazzi were to catch a photograph of her walking into my apartment after hours, then no doubt such a scandal would expose, would spell certain doom for Sarnova. And the certain fact that she looks like a fucking kid! Ah, oh, god damn it! Boy, why are you so dead set on coming here every night anyways? It could be dangerous, you know? What if your producer decided to take advantage of you? There'd be no way a small girl like you would be able to defend herself against a man. Not to mention, he could use his position to silence you afterwards. <laughs> so, you're saying you'll do something like that? Well, anyways, I'm saying this for your sake. You really should be careful. Well, I figure you wouldn't do anything to me. I don't know whether I should be glad or offended to hear that. <laughs> you should be glad! You sh you sh I'm pretty sure you should be glad! <laughs> I'd be glad to hear that someone would say, Well, I don't think you'd do anything to be good! Because the fact that you think I would just makes me question you! What, what are you kind of person do you think I am?! <laughs> God damn it! Ugh, God, this man. Ugh, fucking hell. Did the... 
Oh, I gotta take a drink. I just realized something. <sighs> the reason why she's coming over every night is because she doesn't want to go home, isn't it? Because of her fucking mom, isn't it? <laughs> that, that realization just hit me. <laughs> this is the reason why she comes over here is because she doesn't want to go home to her mom. Like, I don't know what her mom does, but can't be good. Um, maybe it's like Doki Doki and Natsuki's goddamn dad. I don't know. God only knows what happens, but that's the only thing I can guess. Um, did this mean Aki viewed me as such a herbivore man that I didn't even register as a threat anymore? Well, I mean, registering as a threat is one thing, but, like, you're talking more of the sense of just natural rape. Uh, like, if she doesn't think you do that, then that's fine, but why would you want to be seen as a threat? I mean, you can be threatening, but, you know, there's a difference. Besides, it was you that declined, you know. What? Hey, I told you to forget about that incident. What incident? Uh, really? Whatever, I guess it's all in the past, not what incident. Anyways, what's on television? If you want me to leave you alone, then put on some dramas for me. Y you... <sighs> Indeed, a certain incident had occurred three months prior, shortly after the holiday break when I first moved into this apartment. That was the first dangerous event between Aki and myself. Since then, we had arrived at an unstable truce of some sort. Precisely, the sort of uneasy truce like that one that existed between Sale and Pyongyang. Pyong I'm sorry? Ah, but seriously, doing something like that! It really was unbelievable. Are we gonna go back three months? Three, yeah, three months earlier. What happened? <laughs> I'm confused. I had just wrapped up a long day of working, catching up on the matter which had piled up during New York break, a New Year's break, my bad. It was just as I was leaving the office when I heard a certain lowly's voice behind me. Good evening, Oni-chan. Huh? Ah, it's just you, huh? <sighs> what do you mean it's just you? Is that any way to refer to your glorious center? The very center who has led Sarn over to such heights in such a short span of time? Oh, well, I guess you got a point there. Thanks for your hard work. I can't tell. Uh, I can't tell at all if you're being sincere or you're just making fun of me. Just giving credit where credit is due. Anyways, what were you doing out here? Hey, I heard you're doing pretty well, producer. I heard from some birds lately that you bought yourself a brand new luxury apartment. It's true. That was the uh, fulfillment of a lifelong dream. Besides, there was no way that I was going to keep living in my old roach-infested tenement. Well, then it's decided. I'm going to head over there uh, for your house greeting party. Huh? It's only natural for a producer's star idol to congratulate him for his success, isn't it? Clinking together two glasses of sparkling champagne as a toast to our hard work. As we look out the window into the distant night um, cityscape, wondering where our story will go from here. Those types of scenes are appropriate for a moment like this, right? Aki. <clears throat> I appreciate the sentiment, but I can't just have you over my apartment at night by yourself. Maybe we can plan something with the whole staff, you know? No! Let's go over right now! Let's go, producer! With that, Aki practically wrapped herself around me. This unbelievable Oli. She really could be stubborn sometimes. Anyways, I didn't see any harm. Ah, I didn't see the harm. After all, I had gotten so used to her by now that I wasn't going to fall for her usual bag of tricks. Alright, alright. But we can't let the paparazzi see what's going on, alright? Get into my car and I'll take you there. Alright. With that, I took Aki into my car and drove back to my apartment. So also got yourself a new ride, huh? And the BMW at that. You're really loaded now, aren't you, producer? Well, actually, it's more of a loner from Shining Productions. Still, it was our hard work that allowed the company to acquire this car. Aki sniffed the air like a curious dog. <laughs> Definitely has a new car smell. Hey, so do you have a girlfriend for each day of the week now, or what? Obviously not. Don't you see yourself how 
busy I've been with work lately, there's no way I'd get a girlfriend, much less seven of them, with my current work schedule. Well, hey, we got the girls of Shining Spot. <laughs> damn it. Star Nova. Each girl, each day of the week, I date a girl. God damn it. Hmm, I don't know. It could be in... Natan on Monday, Junitan on Tuesday, Sasachan on Wednesday, so on and so forth. Of course, I'd have to be the big Saturday girlfriend, so that you'd be able to hang out with me all day, and we could go on dates. I'm the center of the unit after all. What are you saying? Do you seriously view me as that kind of shady, I, uh, the kind of shady idol producer who would do something like that? Well, nothing personal against you, producer. I'm just laying it out how it is in the business. You know, that kind of relationship spells certain trouble. Going out with superficial women who only care about the money in your bank account is one-way ticket to a lifetime of trouble. Hell yeah. Uh, and you're talking about multiplying that by seven. Uh, uh. I can't believe I'm having this kind of conversation with a kid. Hey, aren't girls your age supposed to be talking about cute things and male pop stars? Isn't she 18? Uh, if she's 18, she she's she's well old enough to be talking about anything like the relationships and stuff. Uh, well, I can't really say I have much personal interest in those things. Of course, I keep up to date with what's popular for the sake of talk shows and fan events, but it's pretty hard to get excited about work. Speaking of which, you've been working as an idol since you were 12, haven't you? Well, that's how old I was when I debuted in Strawberry Pink. Of course I was working as a model before that, since I was seven. It must have been hard. Were your parents connected with the industry? Not really. Aki looked out the window. But my mom really supported my dream. She worked really hard to make me into a big idol. You could say that she was my first producer. I see. Oh boy, at this point we arrived at my apartment. Here we are. I drove into the underground garage, parked the car. We took the elevator and went up to the 31st floor to my apartment. Well, here it is. I'm sure plenty of other producers have better pads than this, but I guess it's the best apartment I've ever had. You can say I'm pretty proud of it. Yeah. Huh. What's the matter? Stunned silent or something? N not really. Anyways, it really is a nice place you have, isn't it? Honestly, I was a little skeptical at first when I heard you moved into a luxury apartment in Ginza, but I guess you really pulled it off. Congratulations, producer. While some guys would have made a big deal about showing off their material possessions to a young woman, I wasn't particularly interested in right now. To my ears, Aki was still just a kid, and... Wait... No, my eyes. When I say you, God damn it! <laughs> my eyes, Aki was still just a kid, and more so a friend rather than a business associate. In fact, I still felt awkward about the fact that she had come up here by herself so late in the evening. Anyways, go ahead and sit down. Is there anything I can get you? Heh, <laughs> well, I did say we were going to clink two glasses of champagne together, didn't I? Alright, alright. I guess we could have a toast to Star Nova's continued success. Hmm. <laughs> With that, I went into the kitchen. My preparations were interrupted by the sound of fabric hitting the floor. I poked my head out into the living room. Aki? <laughs> Listen here! That is not the fitting of an idol! God damn it! Oh my god! I didn't even expect that! I didn't expect that! Oh, I was about to say, what is she messing up my room? But no! That is the last thing I expected! Oh, fucking god! Aki, why are you doing this to me? Oh, god damn it! Oh, God damn it! <sighs> I gasped and immediately looked away. That shit Lolly! I should have known she was planning something! But to think she would actually be crazy enough to strip in front of me in my very apartment! What are you doing?! It's, uh, it's obvious, isn't it? When a man invites an idol over to his apartment at this hour of the night, there's only one thing that's gonna go down, you know. 
Oi, that's totally not in the cards here. Put your clothes back on. I thought it was just Natan who was empty headed, but you too, seriously? Uh, so you like someone else, is that it? It's not a matter of liking not or not liking. It's just improper. You're my idol and supported it. I don't care about that. Hey, look this way. Look at me. Uh, open your eyes. For some inexplicable reason, I did as I was told. <laughs> Maybe in some immature part of my mind, I wanted to look at Aki's fresh naked body. <laughs> Indeed, she was a girl in her absolute prime. Young enough to be a thrill, but old enough to conquer with no remorse. Looking at her, I couldn't help but feel great temptation swirl in the back of my head, telling me to launch myself at her and claim her untouched virgin body for myself. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, God! Don't you like what you're seeing? Hey, don't you think this is dangerous? A small kid like you wouldn't be able to defend herself if a full-grown man decided to take advantage of you. If this is some kind of game, then as your producer, I'd have to tell you to never play it again, because you're seriously overconfident if you think you'll be the winner at the end of this. I don't mind. What? <laughs> It'll really hurt, you know. I said I don't mind. Is this really happening this early? I looked around. If I were to do this, nobody would ever know. It'd be a secret pleasure. I could have... Oh, well, I know he's gonna decline because she said I declined before the flash slack. So, no, it's not going to happen, but it's still shocking. I could have had it all to myself. For a moment, I fantasized. I envisioned my palms running against her womanly curves. She may still be short as a kid, but her body was still matured quite gratefully with all the right tones and shapes. She was so small that I could grab her and do whatever I wanted. <laughs> I imagined grabbing those twin tails of her and loose. <laughs> what? Does the, does the writer of this have a twin tail fetish? Because there's Kato and now the fucking producer? Just losing myself in their scent. Like, uh, I think the writer has a twin tail fetish, my dudes, because this is the second time somebody has just wanted to get all up into twin tails. The twin tails. Fucking hell. Twin tail bonsai. Twin tail bonsai. <sighs> Ah, boy. However wonderful Aki was dancing at uh, the front of the stage, the glorious center of Star Nova. I, of all people, deserve to pluck this sweet fruit and eat it, for I had been the very farmer who produced it. But then I remembered. That wasn't what I wanted. That wasn't what I had gotten, uh, what had gotten me this apartment. And it wasn't what was going to give me my dream. I swallowed my fantasies and put a blanket over Aki's naked body. Put something on. It'll cause trouble if you catch a cold. Her face scrunched up in frustration. I was momentarily taken aback when big tears welled up in her eyes. Am I seriously that unappealing to you? My bad, I guess I'm not quite the innocent, fresh-faced teen that you men like. I should have known things like, uh, would turn out like this. H hey. So in the end, I guess Aki was still a kid. But every kid had to, uh, experience getting rejected. It was the only way she was going to grow up. Sorry, but I don't think stripping down bare naked for someone is really the appropriate way to ask him out on the first date. Anyways, put your clothes back on. I, uh, guess you really need a drink now. <sighs> Idiot. Oh boy, that... <laughs> Eh, that actually took me by surprise. Uh, uh, I was like, the fab. I didn't. I, it didn't click in my mind when he said fabric hitting the floor. I was like, is she messing up my room, throwing like the couch cushions and shit all around? Like, what the fuck you doing out here? And then it just naked sprite. And it's just like, oh, that's what you meant. Okay. Ah. So Aki does the likes, but. What? Uh, you don't- I mean, that that's quite a way to show you like someone. Just tell them, like, let, let me come over to your house, and then they go out the room, they come back, and you're buck naked. I mean, there's nothing that says, I wanna fuck or I like you, more than just standing naked in someone's room. 
I mean, no, don't don't do that though. Because <laughs> it might not end up like this. It might end up in fucking jail. <laughs> Anyways, after a few sips of champagne, Aki calmed down to her usual self. I guess I really made a fool out of myself, didn't I? Well, to be honest, it was a pretty good show overall. Nothing to be embarrassed about, to be sure. <laughs> it's like a, um, it's a little late to be having second thoughts. Oh, you. Would you by any chance be gay? What? You? <laughs> Seriously, the world condemns men for being sexual predators, but as soon as a guy does something good for a change, he gets condemned for being a herbivore. Uh, is there really any, no way to win? Or uh, there really no way to win, is there? Well, I wasn't particularly digging on you. You're a nice dude, aren't you? Nice? I consider my s I consider smart a better compliment. But I want to win. Anything that doesn't bring me a step closer to my goal of making the best idol unit in the world has no meaning to me. Ah, uh, I see. You're the same way, aren't you? Hmm? I want to win. Well then, why would you go and do something like that? I'm guessing it didn't have anything to do with whatever feelings you have for me, if you even have feelings for me at all. That's right. But you know what? You're a naive cherry boy. All of a sudden, Aki's eyes changed. Gone was the insecurity. Instead, she looked at me with unravering certainty. You don't know what it's like to be an idol. One moment you could be popular and rich, but one second later you could be tossed out. If you're blinking, uh, if you blink for just one second, it might not be your dancing on stage anymore. You know, you could be a no one, a failure. Well, I'm definitely not going to go down like that. Aki's fist trembled with fury. Or was it fear? You know it's true, isn't it? As soon as I'm not useful, you're gonna toss me out. After all, how else would you accomplish your goal of making the greatest auto unit in the world? There's no space on such a team for anyone but the very best, and there's no way a girl can look good on television forever. Well, you're only 18, and Maria's 25 and she still looks good, so you got quite a way. Ah! Sorry, I said too much. It's only business as usual, isn't it? Aki's mood suddenly deflated, as if she was convincing herself of the errors of her conviction. Are you alright? It's just the way things are, isn't it? There's nothing anyone can do. From the absolute certainty, her expression suddenly plummeted into one of resignation. I was just hoping, if everything really does turn out for the worst, that you'd be willing to still take care of me. Oh, Aki. In the end, everyone fears dying. It was an absolutely terrifying thing, just how easy it was to die in this world if you weren't useful to someone else. We could shout about how we wanted to accomplish great things and move mountains, but at the end of the day, we were all scared of the possibility that we would one day no longer have anything to eat. Ever since the first man walked on the earth, the sheer terror of starvation had been so sneered into our psyches, psyches that it was impossible to escape. There's no need to think that, because then you'll already have accepted defeat and even before being fought. Or having fought. If you can't visualize your moment of victory, then you'll never win, you know? You must believe that you'll win, or else nobody else is going to hand you the trophy. In the end, you win because you have the trophy in your hand. It's not because you worked the hardest, you suffered the most, or you were the one most deserving. All that matters is that you have the trophy in your grasp, and that climatic scene before the credits roll. People will write the justifications as to why the winner won and the loser lost after the fact, but the rest assured, everything will be made up based on the results. Without the will to fight, you'll never live that moment. You'll never win. I suppose in the end, that's all it comes down to. <sighs> Looks like I've shown off an uncool side of me today. Sorry. Don't worry, I'll forget this incident ever happened. Really? Yeah, don't mind it. But are you sure you're alright with this? I like totally offered myself to you, you know? You're just gonna turn me down that easily? I'm your producer. I'd be letting myself down if I slacked off and gave Starnova nothing but my best work. 
We've all invested so much work into making the unit successful, so I won't be the one to take advantage of everyone's sacrifices for my personal satisfaction. You're a stand-up kind of guy, aren't you? I don't know about that, just a guy who wants to get big things accomplished. At least you're not like the, a lot of scum working in this business. You know, business is all about exchanging favors, <clears throat> and women are naturally born with the biggest favor they can offer to a guy. Not like I'm saying I've done that sort of thing before. <laughs> I don't doubt it. I assumed you might have or forced one of the two because you seem scarred when you when you were with your mom or something and something about I, I, I don't remember when it was like I, I don't I don't know. All right. All right. Anyways, uh, as long as everything's under NDA, it's all safe. Idiot. Just doing my job. You really are hopeless, aren't you? Aki shook off her worries, and I assumed her regular assumed her regular personality. At this rate, you'll never get a girlfriend. How will you ever be happy at this rate? Uh, well, I'm sure there'll be plenty of girls for me once I become a big idol producer. And anyways, uh, from past experiences, I'll be much happier with a woman who understands and cares for me rather than one who's isn't superficial for, me, uh, for superficial reasons. Ugh, what a hopeless herbivore, man. Hey, I'm just trying to live a happy and productive life. Maybe something like that is beyond a shit lowly's comprehension. Eh. Anyways, I'm gonna drive you home. It's already past 10 p.m. <sighs> Looks like it. Isn't this bad? Won't your family be worried? Not really. Don't worry about it. Besides, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not a kid anymore. I can take care of myself. Alright, I hear you. Still, I'm driving you home just in case the paparazzi happen to run into you. Come on, let's go. With that, I ushered Aki out of my room. To tell the truth, speaking to her still unnerved me. She was a kid, still in her teens, but she spoke back to me like a woman equal to my age. Nobody else, how old is the producer? Nobody else on the team spoke as firmly or on such equal terms to myself, not even Maria, the most senior member of the unit. Of course, I wasn't saying that I was. I wasn't saying that I was upset she was overstepping her position. Rather, the fact that a mere child was so devoid of innocence was what disturbed me. Only an adult could appreciate the value of childhood, for nobody truly treasured something until it had been taken away. And yet, I felt this girl had never ha even had a childhood. She merely skipped directly to adulthood. Producers like myself had fashioned her into a calculating, thinking, functional woman from the moment she was old enough to be taught. Kashiwagiaki. Something about her deeply unnerved me. We drove to Aki's apartment. Thanks for the ride, producer. Come on, I'll walk you to the door. Uh, it's alright. It's really late. I'll need to take responsibility for worrying your guardians. Come on. Like I keep saying, I'm not a kid anymore. Despite her words, I followed Aki up to the door. In reality, it wasn't just because I wanted to take responsibility for her that I wanted to escort Aki home. Peering into someone's family life could reveal a lot about someone. And given today's usual incident, I felt, uh, unusual incident, I felt like I had an obligation as a producer to investigate Aki's home life. After all, she was the center of Star Nova. I had to make sure I knew just what kind of person was leading the group. The two of us took the elevator up to Aki's apartment. After Aki rang the doorbell, the door opened, revealing a short woman. While time had aged her features, I could tell that she would have looked extremely similar to Aki two decades prior. Oh. Aki, where- uh, pfft, uh, <laughs> that was- uh, I don't know how to- I don't remember what the voice I gave the mother. Uh, let's see here. Aki, where have you been? Oh god, that, that didn't even sound good. <sighs> Just then I revealed myself. Good evening, Kashiwaki-san. I apologize for keeping your daughter late. An urgent matter came up with work, and I had to uh, force unexpected overtime on your daughter. I expect, uh, I asked for your pardon for my failure. Oh, look at her face. She's changed. Ah, producer-san. The lady's uh, counter countenance completely changed upon seeing me. It's no problem. Aki, you should have just said you were with your producer. Oh, thank you so much for working so hard for my daughter's sake. 
I'm Yumiko. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. Please continue to take good care of my daughter. I appeared behind Aki's mom as she bowed to me. Aki's apartment seemed quite impressive as well, but I noticed the absence of a male figure. Could Aki's dad merely be asleep or working late? Producer-san, please come in. Oh, would you like tea? No, no, it's already quite an impossible hour. Pardon me for my intrusion. Have a good night, Kashiwagi-san. Ah, I understand, and have a good night as well. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna like what's gonna happen now. <laughs> With that, Yumiko wrapped her arm around Aki and ushered her into the apartment. Please don't show afterwards. I don't want to know. I, I think she's going to do bad things to Aki, and I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. After concluding my brief investigation to Aki's home, I got back into my car. Didn't particularly see any glaring warning signs. Well, of course she's not going to do anything in front of the... Uh, the apartment appeared unusually well kept. No signs of neglect. Meanwhile, Aki's mother came off as caring, oh yeah, sure, an <laughs> overbearing parent. However, a certain level of possessiveness from a mother was only naturally expected, uh, especially considering that her little girl worked in such a ruthless industry. Anyways, how's Aki mother, uh, how Aki's mother treated her under her own roof was certainly not for a producer to judge. I started the car, to, uh, started the car deciding to shelf my concerns. Maybe I was merely overthinking it. Maybe Aki was just acting like a confused hormonal teenager and had deluded herself into thinking that dropping her panties for the first male figure in her life would get her comfort and care. Maybe she was just a shit fake lowly after all. <laughs> God damn it. No, it's not funny because there's probably is reason behind that and she's really sad and being abused or something. Oh, God. There's no deep, dark backstory. Uh, you don't know that. Just a regular tea trying to make sense of a nonsensical world. I gulped down my apprehension and drove back home. We're going to see what happened or... Nope, next day. So, okay. Present day. Oh, so we're back to this. Ugh. Ah oh boy, Aki, I, I hope you're not getting abused. Since that eventful night, Aki had been tagging along with me after work to bum out on my sofa every evening. Hell, last month she even brought over an enormous luggage bag of her personal items, as if she decided on her own that she was now a permanent inhabitant of my apartment. It was really outrageous, she even put her toothbrush beside mine in the bathroom as if declaring to me that she was now going to be my lover. <sighs> More than eager to nip that line of thought in the bud, I drove her home as soon as the clock struck 9 o'clock every night, least she get any strange ideas about staying overnight. And somehow her mother seemed totally fine with the idea of her daughter spending days of her youth with a man over 10 years ten years older than her. So I'm 28? Damn! Uh, I'm an old man! Uh, a man ten years older than her. Jesus. Uh, seriously, was she like for re uh, was she like a real like anime mom who was just gonna let her young daughter whimsically fall into the arms of a man? There was definitely something weird about this. I clicked outside the game. Uh, God damn it! Oh boy. In the end, I never found out more about Aki's mysterious history. Why she had tried to seduce me that night, and why she is still hanging out at my apartment as if she, the two of us were lovers. Hey, you. Eh? Haven't you gotten way too comfortable here? It's not like I'm your family member. If you keep this up, it's only a matter of time until we have an accident, you know? <laughs> well, I'm sure Oni-chan will take good care of Aki if something like that happened. Right? Will you drop- Ah, uh, will you drop it with that act? <sighs> I'm just saying, it's downright weird for a girl to be hanging out at a guy's place all the time right now. We've been keeping it a secret, but if word got out, it'd be a big scandal, you know? I'm sure you're aware of that as well, so are you finally going to tell me what's going on? <sighs> well, maybe some other day. It's a long story, and I'm sure a better chance to explain everything will come eventually. For now, what's wrong with just accepting the fact that your pooey pooey little sister idol wants to spend all her time with you, Oni-chan? She was a shit lowly, yes, but the truth was that I found Aki desirable in every way. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> Unexpectedly, I had found a soulmate in Aki. This little kid somehow understood so much about my passion and my work that I oftentimes end up forgetting the fact that 
she was so much younger than me. In the end, Aki was coming over every night because I wanted her to be here, despite my official recruit uh, reluctance. Deep down, I hoped that my feelings for Aki were mutual. Not that I planned ever voicing those desires, I had to be everyone's producer after all. I looked at the clock. Looks like it's time for you to be heading home. But, hey Oni-chan, when can Aki stay the night? Not happening. There's no way I'd get a wink of sleep with you in the apartment. <laughs> so you're saying we'd be go at it all night? Yeah, Oni-chan's a pervert! No. <laughs> I'm taking you home. <laughs> God damn it, Aki! Uh, she's another dangerous one! Ah, oh, God damn it. Like, it's a shit fake lowly act, but it, it is still like that anime kind of shit. So you, if you're a weeb, you'll be like, hmm. Ah, God damn it, Aki. You're, you're, you're scary. Uh, the next morning, the girls are starting over gathered and increasingly rare joint practice. Thanks to the influx of jobs for the girls, they found themselves practicing in small groups or by themselves. Given the first opportunity in a long while to hang out with each other, it was only a matter of time until the girls' motivation to work crumbled away to the temptation of huddling together and exchange the latest gossip. Hey, hey, so I be hearing, is that true aki Yan and Pikun's a pair? Uh -huh. uh, honestly, I've been hearing the same thing. Where have you been hearing this? It's only expected, huh? It's always the young ones with the fresh faces that end up embedded in the execs. Meanwhile, the, once the skin starts to sag and parts start to smell and ache for no reason, it's pretty much the end of the road, isn't it? Wait, wait, wait a minute! Uh, why did things have to turn out this way? Why didn't I listen to Mama back in middle school? Uh, Honei-sama is once again falling down the cliff of regrets. So this was the dark world of grown-ups. In the end, the glory of the center position ended up falling to the Red Imp. This one should have known that the role class was OP. After all, they get the massive sneak attack bonus on top of the highest DPS. Uh, how could this one have failed to see? What? Ah! Oh, I forgot! I forgot about you! Oh! Uh! Uh, I forgot about the yandere! Oh shit! Ah, I don't know why I it, baby! Oh, 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 forgot about the yandere! Uh, I looked at her and then I was like, wait! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> no, stop, stop, stop! What are you all talking about, Aki-chan? <coughs> Why are you all talking about Aki-chan like she's not here? Really? Everyone isn't talking. Uh, isn't this talk getting old now? Aki-chan's been the center since last summer, and ever since then, her opportunities really skyrocketed. I say she's been doing a good job. Rose naturally turned to the red lowly. Well, Sasha-chan's got the idea. Besides, it's only natural that the producer would be attracted to both my beauty and smarts. Aki grinned as if she thought she was worth a billion yen. <laughs> I might be the youngest here, but remember, I'm still the ace of this unit. You... <sighs> <laughs> it's all about markability. I'm sorry to say, but these, uh, these and these still have promise. Aki slapped her own ass and groped her yet sprouting chest. <laughs> oh, <laughs> these assets are projected to remain relevant market movers for the next six years. You know, I've seen the profit projection graphs uh, on producer um, work computer myself. Meanwhile, as for the rest of you, <laughs> Aki snorted to herself as if the rest of the girls were even worth her attention. What a hell? Uh, well, there you have it. So, it's only natural that the producer would have his eyes set only on me. I don't believe this. It's obvious that the shit lolies managed to get jack squat from the producer. If she had done anything, I doubt she'd be continuing her shit lolly antics like this. More than likely, she probably already... Uh, I see stars. Uh, more likely, she'd uh, probably already be dangling in front of our faces a photo of her cell phone with the producer's... Let's... let's...
Wait, wait, wait a minute. What? What is that word? One, two, three, four, five, six. I. What? What are those words? Those are more star. Cause. Uh, his dick is four, p uh, c is four, penis is like five, like, what? What? No. No. Yeah. With my what in her? What? Whoa, man! What? What is that word? With my what in her? And this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven! I don't know what those words are. Julie! Uh, what? I can't think! Six letter word that's for the man? Uh, I'm gonna have to look on Google. Give me a second. I, I, gotta, I gotta look for this. Whoa, what? Six letter words for dick, I guess. Uh, uh, oh, God damn it. Uh. Like, what? What? I can't think of what it would be. I can't think of what those would be. I I might just not be. I I I just can't think. What would they be? What would they be? I don't know. What would they be? What would they be? What would they be? What 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 what, what would they be? Anyways, uh, yeah. But yeah, Julie and. <laughs> Oi, why are you looking at me like I've lost my mind? It's true, isn't it? We're all adults here, aren't we? Anyways, don't believe a word of this shit Lily's nonsense. Well, actually, it's true that I've been playing with him, uh, paying him some visits at his home after hours. Uh -huh! The other members gathered around Aki with perked up ears. It's not like anything is, uh, shady has been going on. <laughs> it's just... Well, I've been... I just like being around him, that's all. The two of us have a lot in common, and I feel like I can talk to him about almost anything. Kind of like being with you guys. It's nice, you know, being able to show your true face to someone without being afraid. Anyways, it's not like we're going out or anything, and he still treats me like a kid, but I don't mind it. <sighs> the girl's all relaxed. In the end, they had merely been play fighting within their group. Each of them had their personas and inside jokes to maintain for the sake of appearances. But now that they were talking about something serious, the girls railed around a Aki. In the past few months, they had overcome countless trials together, largely thanks to the hard work of their newly minted center. With each challenge they surpassed, the girls had become closer. Today, each of them were unquestionable sisters. Yeah, I always figured something like this would have happened. It's only natural Pikun would want to bond with Akion. After all, he picked her as her center. <sighs> Straight-laced guy like him would never make a move, though. Are you really gonna be alright? You better prepare your heart, you know. It's obvious he's not going to return your feelings. Producer son is truly a studious man, no? I cannot fathom him taking advantage of Aki for personal reasons. <sighs> he wants, uh, every one of us to become idols. Aki-chan, you knew all along that idols we, as idols, we weren't going to get into romantic relationships. Let's all focus on becoming big-name idols together, okay? I suppose so. I guess. Things weren't as bad as I imagined, you know? I thought that to make it big in the idol business, you gotta betray, uh, scheme and uh, manipulate your teammates. All the while sleeping your way up the company chain of command. But Star Nova wasn't like that. Aki broke into a rare, genuine smile. As expected, it disappeared in a heartbeat as she reverted back to her usual shitlowly antics. But all the girls saw it. That enough was proof of its existence. Ah, but what's all this mushy stuff about? No wonder you, sh uh, you softies lost the center spot to the youngest girl in the unit. <laughs> 
The girls chuckled. So much had happened in the past few months. Hey, remember the one time the paparazzi dug up Julie's old compensated thieving profile? Oh, I can't believe people made such a big deal out of that. I seriously received death threats on my chipper, you know. It was a huge shit show. Um, but then Aki Chan brought us all together, and the fans ended up forgiving Julie Chan, right? I suppose so. Or when Nemu Chan's mother almost crashed our big Yoyogi live? I apologize for my troublesome family has brought the trouble my family has brought. But you know, we all banded together and still managed to make the live a success. And in the end, Nemu Nemu managed to reconcile with her family. Indeed. And when we held the live at Natan's hometown, and when Maria sprained her ankle, but we all banded together to convince the company not to retire her. Every time, it was Aki-chan leading us on the center, you know? Well, I was only performing my duty to the unit. saucer chan has got a point. we sure been through a lot in the past. Here, oh boy. But each time we manage to only become stronger thanks to our troubles. That's why I love every one of you. I'm proud to be a Nova. Maybe it'll be the proudest thing I'll ever have in my life. All right, all right. Thank you for your comments, Lamb of Star Nova. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, it's practice time, isn't it? What are we all doing slacking off like this? We rarely get time to practice, you know. Come on, let's get to work. Aki-chan's right. Come on, ladies, let's get moving again. My thoughts precisely. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen you. Ah! Oi, how long have you been there? My... Producer San called me here to conduct your first joint practice in such a long time. But when I heard you ladies' emotional heart to heart, I simply could not interrupt. Oh, so beautiful, the invincible bonds of camaraderie shared by sisters of Star Nova. Yeah. But alas, the time for chatter has now passed. Let's get those bottoms moving, my kittens. Chop, chop. Without the girls, once again, assume their dance formation and resume their practice. Oh boy, and we'll call it a day there, because, I don't know, <laughs> but, ah, uh, that has been uh, quite the episode, we got a naked lowly in the first episode, took only a matter of seconds, <laughs> anyway, thank you all for watching, if you like this, hit the thumbs up button, and save it to your favorites, I'll share it with your friends, this has been Kinex, you can follow me on Twitter, link is in the description below. Oh, can't wait to see the toils of Aki's route, so far things seem... Normal, the girls aren't fighting and there's no bitchery since Julie isn't the censor, so there shouldn't be any problems to the group for now, unless some crazy shit happens. But thank you all for watching, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.